In this Tobacco University video, we'll be covering THC and THCA cannabinoids to provide you with a little bit more detail on these so you can develop a better appreciation for this particular cannabinoid. So you might be wondering what the difference between THC and THCA is. Well, here we see them in the basic chemical structure, and THCA basically has this additional group added on here. Um, so again, that's the chemical um, uh, difference at the molecular level. So this is a great research article here where we're looking at, it goes into a lot of detail on many cannabinoids. This video lecture, I'm going to focus on THC. So why THC? Well, it's the famous one. Uh, it is one of the most recognized cannabinoids ever to be discovered. Kind of like the Taj Mahal. Show a picture, everyone knows what that is. Uh, while there are multiple uh, compounds in cannabis that offer medicinal benefits uh, and many more that modulate the impact of THC, there are none with such psychoactive impact as THC. And that's why it's kind of the most famous one, uh, because it has such a unique effect. So what is that effect? Well, kind of the effect with uh, THC after consuming decarboxylated THCA or THC in high doses can cause near hallucinations uh, for some. Although the effect is not technically intoxicating, it is certainly abbreviating and uh, very often uh, psychedelic. So some uh, effects of acute marijuana intoxication, we can see some of the after effects of consuming a cannabis bud here that has a high amount of THC. Now here it says consuming decarboxylated THCA. When it's decarboxylated, it goes to the Delta 9 THC many people are familiar with. So the molecule that started the war, uh, it is the cannabinoid that is the target of now uh, fading drug war, which characterized uh, cannabis as a dangerous and addictive drug. In the absence of THCA, there may never have been a, a, a drug war against cannabis. Uh, so it's just kind of an interesting component of that. It was really the molecule that the plant produced that really caused a lot of this uh, drug war. Kind of developing companies such as the farmer and the felon, uh, things like that, DEA going after uh, plants, and the federal level being set at what it is for the specific THC molecule. So what's the original source? Well, THC, believe it or not, uh, the original source is CBGA. THCA, like uh, CBDA, is uh, synthesized from CBGA in the apoplastic space of the secretory vesicle within the trichome structure. The enzyme that does the work is THCAase, or THC synthase. Again, there is a peroxide byproduct which is toxic to the cell, therefore THCAS, or THCA synthase, biosynthesis must occur in the trichome of the C uh, secretory vesicle. So we're looking kind of a visual of this. Well, here's our CBGA, and then it's THCA, and also CBG is being derived from that single molecule, kind of like the original molecule, the stem cell molecule, that through enzymatic actions and other plant functions can then be made to produce these various compounds, all occurring within the trichome. So THC uh, and regulations, when well, we're looking at current regulations that require all CBD hemp flowers with a THC content greater than 0.3%, thereby classified as marijuana and must be destroyed. There are a few exceptions to the rule of THCAAs producing THCA and CBDAs uh, producing CBDA. So there are a couple of exceptions, but pretty much all cannabis, hemp, uh, equal to or less than 0.3% THC, marijuana greater than 0.3% THC, THC being that molecule that causes the, categor the categorization of that plant material. So we get into biological expectations versus regulations. Well, research from Oregon CBD company has shown that in vitro, CBDAS will produce one part THCA for every 20 parts of CBDA. Why is that important? Well, because with the cannabinoid content of hemp exceeding 20%, it may be totally unreasonable to have the THCA content requirement set to 0.3% or less, simply because we can biologically expect a minimum of 1% THCA for every 20% of CBDA produced by the CBDA synthase the required synthase for CBDA production. So because of this, this means that if we're getting these cannabinoids so high, the plant has to convert a certain percentage. So if we're exceeding 20% um, uh, cannabinoids in hemp, we are expected biologically, biological expectations, to get uh, a minimum of 1% THCA. So therefore, setting the federal limit at 0.3% or less really limits the amount of cannabinoids that this plant can theoretically produce overall. So again, that regulations versus the biological expectations of the plant, again, don't really match up. 
So THC interactions, we're looking specifically at THC um, and its interactions. Pre pre and uh, in the human receptors, particularly interacts with the CB1 uh, receptor in the endocannabinoid system. For the majority of these, receptors are found in the nervous system tissues. And when bound by THC, they modulate the electrochemical systems that allow us to perceive the world, presumably resulting in that psychoactive effect. And here's just a little comparison here and some studies that have been done on THC found in that article. So lastly, just want to leave you with a THC uh, THC comparison to aspirin. This is also explains the elogistic uh, muscle re relaxant and antiplasmic properties. THC has been shown to have, quote, 20, 20 times the anti-inflammatory power of aspirin and twice that of hydrocortisone, end quote. So here we're seeing kind of that uh, potential medical benefits of THC, uh, of other cannabinoids, and related to the cannabis plant. And hopefully this gave you a little bit more detail uh, than you may not have originally realized about the cannabinoid THC and THCA produced by cannabis plants.